previously on this scene. New country cornflakes! New country cornflakes! Hey, it's David Lenham for Shaw Television's The Scene, the island-wide program about music. The best music that's homegrown on the island, the best music that visits the island, that is right here every week. Yeah, and on Facebook.com slash The Scene TV. Oh, our big Play It Tall Treat contest going on right now. I'm going to give you a little information on that uh, later in the show, but uh, stick around and listen to that. Uh, I'm holding coffee because it's good for you, and it is early, and I need it for my brain to stimulate it to talk like this. And yes, I am wearing... Safari pajamas. There we go. Soak it in. I was taunted by the staff earlier. Daniel and Jose, thank you for rubbing it in. So I just wanted to let you know this is pre-taunting. It's all out of the way now. It's all above the board. If you see me later in the show and go, that guy's wearing safari pajamas. Yeah, I know. Okay. Let's move along to music. That's why we're here. San Felix is a six-piece Victoria band embracing a uh, kind of a West Coast folk pop sound. We, we shot this piece at Demi Cast in Oak Bay on this cool little outdoor patio, crammed them all in there, nice, including the banjo. Uh, they got a new EP out, which is nice, and they are looking to become Canada's best new band uh, through the CBC Radio Searchlight Contest. So this is Chatting with San Felix. So here I am with the band San Felix. The name suggests something exotic and perhaps Spanish, an island off the coast of Chile. What's the deal? You're around, you're pretty much right. Yeah. Did you all meet on that um, island? It's or? also the saint of luck. Oh. Oh yeah. As far as the... Uh, you, could, you could find him on stained glass windows in Ireland maybe? <laughs> Somewhere around there, yeah. <laughs> yeah let, let's introduce the band members, starting with Ian, who's not here. Yeah, Ian, Ian had to jet, he's the... He's our kind of our Ian, front man. Ian Cobb's a great, upstanding guy, great sense of humor. He's he's currently um, run off to uh, very charismatic. <laughs> he's running for uh, UVSS for as the event coordinator at uh, the University of Victoria for their the student society. You know, by the time this airs, so. he'll have won or lost. He'll It'll have won or lost. So we'll so uh, we won't he we ran. won't talk too much about that. But Ready? he's he's doing most of the singing. Who else? Uh, introduce everybody here. Uh, so we have we uh, have Brett. Uh, my buddy Brett here. I, I try and back up Ian with some with some vocals uh, and do some banjo and uh, whatever else they tell me to do, really. And you'll notice Brett is and, and Brett is also wearing the. Uh, so we don't we can save money by not having this appear below the screen. Thank you for doing that. And uh, to my right we have Damien. He plays uh, lead guitar. And uh, those knuckles. Look at that, eh? Yeah, get the zoom in. Cold fam, fame. There we go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who's that over there? Uh, we have Sydney. Sydney plays keys and sings backup as well. You guys are like uh, it's been described as uh, the sound is folk pop. It, does that mean just somebody showed up with a banjo one day and you and that clinched it or, uh, or what? Um, I actually they just found me at an open mic and I and they said Brett you should come jam with us and then. I said, really? There's already five of you. Are you sure? He said, uh, Ian said, yeah, it, it'll be totally cool. And I know that it's it was. just running and, just And running we're with paying it. for it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. no, it's fantastic. Folk pop is dangerous territory. One wrong move in your new age. 
Was folk pop uh, like a genre that got you guys together originally? Nothing we were going for. We have six totally separate musicians that are into so many different genres of music, and I guess it's just what's come out from having six different people and get you told together. told me earlier you used to play in a punk band. Well, yeah, Ian and I used to play in a bit of a punk band together, but yeah, it's, that's... Yeah, it was fun, but this I enjoy playing this a lot more. So. I'd really say hold the horses on any genre because I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we, we I don't think we even really know. We just, yeah. The uh, the EP is is sort of coming out, but it's out on on at sanfelix.bandcamp.com. Yeah, we've, th we've got three songs on there, and then we're gonna do a couple more, and then uh, do a do a real release for it in a couple months. <laughs> and what happens? Some touring following the release of the EP? Uh, yeah, we've uh, we've just kind of set in stone all our, our applications for music festivals for, for festival season in the summer. So yeah, you, need, um, you need to apply like two years in advance if you want to play a summer music before festival. Before you've even so. formed a band or learned how to play <laughs> instruments, right? Apparently, <laughs> that's, that's the way things seem to be these days. But it's, uh, and Sam Weber to... recording with you guys? Yes, yes. He recorded uh, the tracks that we have up on our EP online. And, yeah, it was fantastic. It was great. So, so visit this. Yes, here, not his shirt, but go there now. who thought the concept album was dead, think again. Yeah, you've listened to Pet Sounds, The Wall, Sgt. Pepper, one, two, many million times, and you think, ah, nobody can craft a, an entire album, maybe even a double album around a, a single concept. Well, Jay Malinowski has, yeah, the front man for Bedouin Sound Clash, has released a solo project with Jay Malinowski and the Dead Coast. It's called Martell, semi-autobiographical, historical. It's a very cool album, and here is our feature interview 
with Jay Malinowski. Uh, a lot of times when a front man of a popular band puts out a solo album, and I know you've done it before, people think, mm, he's dissatisfied with the music he's playing, with his group. Does this, and it also says, you know, that group's over. Is this the end of Bedouin Song Clash or is it just a, a side way? I was not dis, I, no, no, to answer all those questions. <laughs> um, uh, no, I've, I've, I love Bedouin and I will always love playing that music. And the way we started playing was just our love of, for me, the Clash, reggae, and, and that's never going to change. I mean, I'll, like, Joe Strummer will always be my, my hero. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I think, uh, you, you know, like there's a, for me, I always had the idea that I wanted to, to create projects. And, and even with Bedouin, I was like, what can we do with, with our influences? Mm -hmm. And those will change a bit, and so I wasn't dissatisfied. I mean, it was tough, though. I'll say, um, when you have a massive song, mm -hmm. and you start as a you know a Canadian reggae band, not really. That's not really going on the books as something that's going to be a real popular thing, you know, Canadian reggae. So, and we got that a lot when we started, and it was it was almost like fire for us. Like we, you know, we thought what we were doing was valid, and then you have a massive song, and then you have a brand. And that's something that we never were comfortable with. And you with. just keep feeding it, right? Well, like you can, I mean, we could, I mean, yeah, you can always go and make money, but we didn't do this to make money. So mm -hmm. we thought, let's take a break and let's get some perspective. And so I don't know, if, you know, when we'll make a record, but I, I know that we will. Mm -hmm. So So it's just there. I'm and always it's never going the, away. Like, to, but the answer to the other part, I'm always dissatisfied. So like that, <laughs> that was that has existed since I was like eight years old. So that's probably why I play in a band. As a solo project, this is so unique. I've, I'm, I'm, we'll get a close up of that later. But here, here is is the disc. There you are, looking good and moody, and there you aren't. But I, I, I'm going to explain this. So the album is Martell. Um, how often do people? put out a concept album, how often do they put out a double album, how often do they write a novella that goes along with the album? I mean, this is this is new ground for Canadian music, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, it was very... What are you doing? Are you hanging out with Hoxley Workman too? Oh my God, yeah, getting all sort sure. of theatrical. He's playing, right? Here soon. <laughs> he's, he's with, I, I know Steve well. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I've always loved a challenge and... Um, uh, the, at the end of the, at, for me, at the end of the day, it's stories that I've loved. I've mm -hmm. always loved stories, narratives, and and whether it was seeing uh, the Clash and they look like a gang, and I wonder, I would want to be in their world. I wanted to know what what that was mm -hmm. like, you know. Um, and so uh, when it came to the Martell thing, I wanted to. For me, it was a story of of my of going through a lot of a process of questioning in my life, and right. and then through going through my grandfather's notes about our great ancestor Charles Martel, uncovering a narrative where I thought, oh, am I making these choices based on a real, on a historical precedent? Like, mm -hmm. am I a, did I think I determined that I wanted to play in a band or was this something that in a pattern <laughs> has happened for me for years, for life, right, lifetimes? Right. And so uh, that was how this, the novel came about as well, was just um, taking some of those stories from my grandfather's side on, in Cape Breton, taking some stories from touring and creating this character, Martel, who's a sailor, who um, is sending letters to his granddaughter uh, to try to impart some wisdom to her. And that's how the novel came about. It's heady stuff, but it, it, it works musically, which is interesting. Just the way you've, just the way you've crafted it. I haven't read the book yet. E-book, I yeah, understand. Yeah. So I can just download it and, and read yeah. it right now, almost. You could download the first chapter. It comes out in chapters. Nice, so, so first you're the chapter, Stephen King of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, we serialized it. So um, it will, it will, there'll be uh, seven letters, and, and so there'll be 14 chapters. You know, the other thing that reminded me of was obviously, and people would draw comparisons to Brian Wilson and Pet Sounds mm. uh, when he sort of did that private thing, although involving the Beach Boys. And, and you got Sloop John B on here, right? You know, which was on that album yeah. again. I, 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 well, it I, wasn't a mistake for us. Like I, I, I think, like for me, Sloop John B is a, it's a great way. It's a great vehicle for conversation because everyone knows the Beach Boys version. Yeah. But it's a song that like Johnny Cash has covered, the Kingston Trio covered. Like Brian Wilson didn't even want to cover it. Uh, he was convinced to, but he thought it was too folky, and so he changed it up. And it's the seminal version. And to me, when I hear the Beach Boys, I, I love the Beach Boys, but I think of sunny beaches, a '60s American ideal when things were good. Um, there was no, there wasn't as much cynicism. And so if, when we went to do that, I just wanted to have one long baritone sax drone. But everyone would immediately know the Beach Boys version, and we were not. Obviously, if you're like, uh, if you're into like into records, you're a Brian Wilson fan. 
and you probably might be upset by, by the cover. So we wanted to do something with a little jarring. It is. But, 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 it, but, but, it's but, jarring, but it's, it has this sort of the slowness of the album. It's a little bit, like the whole album is a bit of Bruce Springsteen, Nebraska. <laughs> and, and I, uh, which I love, yeah. only because it, it seemed that whenever that album was going to kick suddenly, here comes the E Street Band, yeah. you know, it, it didn't. And yeah, your yeah, Sloop yeah. John B is a bit down. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be, okay. it's supposed to be a breakdown happening in the Pacific Gyre. So, um, yeah, I hope, I'm glad, hopefully we can. God, we got that across. Melancholy <laughs> song. Because that was, you know, that's the one song where we're like, man, people are gonna hate this. Like, we know what people, how people feel about Brian Wilson. Like, every person, we're like, and they had the gall to cover <laughs> Sleep John B. Well, you've taken chances here, and Thank I, yeah, I applaud you for that. Thank because you. Because in this industry, there's just not enough of that. We live in an industry of fear. And I gotta tell, <laughs> I gotta just say, uh, I rarely put a plug out, but go and get this. Listen to it. It's in its entirety once, and you will listen to it in its entirety a whole bunch of times. That kind of album. Jay, thanks for uh, coming on the scene thank you today. So much. What a pleasure. Yeah, no, thank no, you. Jay Malinowski. Fall Brigade is a folk tinged Victoria band that created a lot of buzz. They were in the top 20 of the Peak Performance Project last year. It's a family affair in this band. Siblings Caleb and Esther Scott front the band. Interestingly, they'd been working independently, making music themselves for years before getting together to put out the EP Greater North. And from that record, here is Fall Brigade live in performance. This is Eve and Stay.
longer the days, the longer I'll wait. Remember what I told. Victoria Hard Rock and Outfit, This Day Burns, is a typical Victoria band story born out of another band, in this case, Saul, the legendary Saul. Weren't they uh, in Rocktoria back in the day? Remember Rocktoria? Remember Market Square? Because that's where we are now. Does anyone come down here anymore? Is it the 80s? Is that Jose Arujo over there working, pretending to work, doing something? Are you doing? Yes, he is in his orange glasses. I like that. And here me in my safari pantsuit. <laughs> Mock, I'm immune, I don't care. Uh, so anyway, back to this day, Burns. We uh, caught up with Jasmine, Sky, and John outside the UVic Student Union building, talked to them about, uh, yeah, how Jasmine joined the band, uh, found on Craigslist, that's pretty cool for your lead singer, and uh, checked out their new video for Still Bleeding. Okay, I'm here with Jasmine Witzke of the band This Day Burns. Now, Jasmine, I know in Victoria a lot of bands always were other bands or members of other bands. Mm -hmm. This Day Burns uh, came out of Saul in a way, didn't mm -hmm. it? Can you, can you tell me who, who these guys are and how, how this all came together? This is John and this is Skye. And he's way better at this intro story than I am because... He's got it down, eh? Yeah, he's the one who found me, so he's got all the background story. Oh, okay. Well, uh, oh, John, I'm going to nail it, nail it with you. How did, how did uh, yeah. the Stay Burns come together? It was basically me and Chris, who isn't here. We're in uh, Saw together, and um, that just sort of fell apart. So we were kind of trying to put something new together. I ended up finding Jasmine here on Craigslist, of all places. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Once I got to an ad that I posted on on Christ. You Not, can do that yeah. with musicians? Not the personals. Yeah, I was going to say, right? It was yeah. Like... <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, we, we had her uh, come to try out, and um, she like took off out of the room for a minute, and me and Chris both turned to each other, like, I hope she doesn't realize she's better than us. <laughs> So you guys, it's funny you were pop rock, because you guys, uh, when I look at the video, it's pretty rocking. Like, it's pretty aggressive. Are you guys like closet metalheads or what? <laughs> yes. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yes. We, we do have a lot of heavier songs that aren't on the album. Yeah. Uh, hoping to record those soon. <laughs> and he was actually in a band called Archon Legion and Robot Metropolis. Yes. <laughs> Just to qualify. So those were yeah. metal bands. Well, so. well, to be honest, the reason we uh, we have popular songs and heavy songs and stuff is because we all switch instruments, so we all kind of put our own input and take on on music. And um, it's it's kind of nice because if we're playing a heavier show with with bands that are kind of like -na 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 -na, you know, <laughs> then we're able to bring our heavier stuff to the table. But if we're playing like you know more of a popular or a softer show, then we can you know change our set. To accommodate whatever audience we think we're going to be dealing with, right? So. Uh, what, what's next for uh, this day, Burns? Is there something big coming up? Going to record an EP soon. Um, I don't know how many songs. April, Six songs. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a bunch of songs that we're trying to sort through and just make sure we pick the right ones. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Exactly. Write some new stuff too. And then maybe touring in August, I think, down to the states, like on yeah. the west coast. Not definite yet, but hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> definite, probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah. Good. Let's take a look at uh, some This Day Burns.
last episode of the scene, we launched our second annual Play a Tall Tree contest, which gives you, the musician, a chance to get up on the stages of the Tall Tree Music Festival and rock out June 27th to 29th, Browns Mountain, Port Renfrew. Beautiful location. You get to join us. Hey, hey! Nice pajamas, buddy. Whoa! Wow, it's a great sand suit, man. Woo! From yeah, I Star mocked Wars. myself at the beginning of the show. Maybe you missed that. I missed Maybe it. you missed that. I don't know. I was self mocking. I, I said, yeah, it's my sand pajamas or whatever. Safari Obviously, there pajamas. wasn't enough of this. You know, I think. I don't care anymore. Yeah. It's just a jacket and pants, and I didn't look in the mirror before. I <laughs> you really? Matches, I'll okay. buy you one for Christmas. Yeah, a big one. I love you, yeah. Jose. Tell us uh, who you get to play with if you win this contest at Tall Tree. Well, it's I, a massive I, list. Massive list here. I got Bone Hoof. I got Isabel Trigger. I got. Uh, look at the dude. Dudes, Deep Sea, Gypsies, Dan Mangan, yeah. Blacksmith. Vinyl Richie, I just like the way that sounds. John and Roy, Bear Mountain. I mean, it's Koya, like. yeah, The Roper Show. Tons and tons of bands. We had 60 entries last year, almost 60 entries. Want to get that again this year. How do you enter? You just shoot a performance video of your band, like uh, with your iPhone. A good one, you know. Try ah, put some effort into it. You know, Costumes, throw... bananas. Donkey Kong, Godzilla. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter, really. We just want to see if you fit in the Tall Tree vibe. So send us a performance video. Just post it to the Scenes Facebook page. Post it to the Tall Tree Festival page. It's as simple as that. The deadline is May 17th, so you got to get, get your entries in uh, really quickly. And then, magically, our panel of expert judges will select an entry. You will win. You will play a Tall Tree. Who simple. Are the, who are the judges? Expert judges. Like expert judges. Men. Right. I'm not. <laughs> But you mean like with the yeah. pajamas? Okay, you gotta right. go. Anyway, that's it for the scene. We'll see you next time. Daniel Pender, Jose Arujo, I'm David Lenham. Goodbye. <laughs>